Hello, I'm Michael Redman, professional Go player. In this video, I'm going to be talking about White's attachment at the start point. And so this is against a black two-space corner enclosure. And you might notice that White has played a preparatory move at M17 there. This is a pattern that if you're watching strong players play, uh, you should be seeing it fairly often, actually. So it's a popular Joseki. Actually, I'm going to make two videos of it because black has two choices here. Black can play a hane underneath or black can actually play a hane on top on the fifth line here. And so I'm going to look into both of these moves as the major variations and I'll make a separate video for each one of them because they, they're a bit different from each other and they get um, sufficiently complicated that I think that they deserve separate videos. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about Black's Hanya underneath. And let's just take a look at the, um, the board position I have in mind when I'm talking about this. So here we are looking at the full board position. Um, I'll take it back to the first moves. This is fairly common uh, opening where Black has played two, three, four points and has played a big Shimari. So White plays an approach move here. And Black has answered... Now, this is also the standard move in this kind of opening. And at this point, white has a choice of playing some kind of an extension on the right side. Um, or actually, I'm going to have white play here, which is also a very popular move. This move is already aiming to play the start point next. But when white plays a move like this, it's sort of inefficient for black to play a local reply like this. You can see those two black stones lined up like that. They're... Um, a bit too tight. There's too many stones there in the one place. In this case, white could just uh, return to the right side and that exchange on the upper side would have been beneficial for white. So it would be a, a local gain for white. So um, black will generally play away. Maybe this uh, pincer on the right side. Black could have played um, one of those 3-3 three, three points would be a popular move nowadays or an approach to one of white's corners. Um, pincering here on the right side is a pretty big move. So this is the board position I have in mind when I'm going to discuss this attachment at the 404 point. So let's get back to a closer look at this. Um, I'm going to say that Black's best local moves are a hane underneath or a hane on top. So it's, it's this move or this move. But I will take a um, close look at this move just for a moment in this video. This is generally an overly passive move, although this is uh, feasible. White will jump here and black has to add another stone there to connect up to the side. So probably we'll play here and white plays here. So uh, in this position black has a very solid shape but um, actually I'd say it's slightly too solid. It looks like black is just being a bit too serious about making connected shapes there and is slightly inefficient. So white has a slightly better shape um, and white stones are more active in this position. It's usually satisfactory for white. So black's main variations, I will say again, will be this honey and this honey. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about this honey. So when black plays here, uh, white's move is always going to be here. So this is in relation to uh, the pre preparatory move that white made at M17. So in relation to that, White's strongest move is to play this honey at B17. And against this, um, black will usually just cut. So when black cuts, obviously white is going to extend the more important stone as is forced. And here, black seems to have an opportunity to capture the white stone in a ladder. It's not a good idea. If black cuts here, if black captures the one stone here, white can play here. This is just um, going to be good for white. Uh, white has this forcing move. If white plays the diagonal move here next, black's going to be forced to answer. Let's do that in a variation. Um, if black plays something on this side, white can peep here. This is just so uh, painful for black. If white starts doing stuff like that, it becomes the black group that is in trouble here. And white is chasing black out. So black doesn't want to do that. Uh, otherwise, if black takes here, and then takes the one stone. Um, black does not have any co-threats for this co. 
And if black connects, white's just going to go after the one stone. And this is just a very painful variation for black. So I don't advise that black tries to capture the white stone at p17. It's going to be bad, however it turns out. So returning to the main variation, black will connect at the 3-3 three, three point. And so up to this point, there is a very high possibility that your opponent will also play this way. Whichever side you're on, um, I think it's pretty likely that you'll get this far in the sequence. It's a pretty forced sequence, so let's just go through the moves once more. White plays the attachment, and if black plays here, the double hane, and like this. So we've gotten this far. It's a pretty straightforward sequence up to this point, and this is where white has two choices. And I'm going to say that it's a choice of whether you want to keep things relatively uh, simple and play a kind of a positional game where the whole board matters more, or you can sort of fight where the local fight is going to spread out into the rest of the board. And it sort of changes with this next move. So if white plays here, let's, uh, let's look at this one first. If white plays here, this is putting more pressure on black's stones in the corner. Um, basically, if white is going to play here next, that's going to put black stones in trouble there. So black is pretty much forced to escape um, the slide in the, on the side, and white will have the opportunity to move out here. So in this case, we're going to get into a big fight in the center of the board, uh, and you're free to play this if you like a fight. Just uh, You can start the fight from here, and there's all sorts of things that can happen now. Just take a quick look at it on the whole board. It's going to be like this. So yeah, this is uh, completely feasible for both sides. It's going to be a big fight spreading out into the center of the board. At this point, neither side has plans to sacrifice anything. So both of those groups, all of those groups will be fighting with each other for the rest of the game. So that will be fun. Let's look at the other variation now. So otherwise, if white plays here, this is going to be relatively simple and straightforward. There's a key point here which black doesn't really want to allow white to play. So black is going to extend there. And white pushes on the fourth line. So white is planning to sacrifice these stones in this variation, but they're still putting pressure on black. For instance, if black tries to push her and cut here immediately, it's not going to work. If black extends, white gets to capture the four stones. So that's obviously bad for black. And if black plays here, um, White's just um, going to build on the upper side and give up these four stops. So something like this. Uh, let's switch back to the, the whole board again. It's like this. You can see that white has made some potential for the upper side. And black does have the right side. So this is sort of going according to plan. And white will play a move something like this to establish the moyo in the upper side. And here we see a position where white seems to have a hole there on the third line. Uh, this is sort of important, so I'll just go into this one variation before I finish here. Um, when you have the hole like this and black pushes through the cut, especially in a position where black is already pretty stable on the right there, uh, white doesn't really mind giving up these two stumps, especially if black starts with a cut on the left. So the proverb says that you capture the cutting stump. So if black cuts on the, le on the left, white is going to capture this stone and give up these two stones. White gets one more move elsewhere on the board, so maybe here. Or if black cuts on the right, white can actually take this stone for the time being also. And if black plays here, it's probably going to develop into a variation something like this, where black can capture these stones if black tries, but white's going to just get more and more thickness and this is okay for white also. It's a position where white has sacrificed that group on the upper side, but white did get a lot of mileage out of it. So this is okay for white. Otherwise, uh, black can actually go down here, in which case uh, white doesn't really have the option of capturing those two stones because the whole group would die with black cutting on the left, but uh, white will just play here. In this case, black didn't actually get to take those stones off the board. They're still on the board. Um, and that's pretty significant. When these stones are still on the board, um, I don't know what's going to happen exactly, but at some point, white's going to play 
be able to play an Atari of some kind. So for instance, maybe White's gonna play a stone some, somewhere around here. And in some cases, like uh, White's gonna be getting uh, stuff like this happening. And at some point, eventually White's gonna get an Atari from the outside. So in some cases, having those white stones still on the board, it's gonna make a big difference. And so it's good for White to be able to have played that exchange of the stone at 11 for black 12 before connecting on the left. That was a profitable exchange for white. So I'll just recap now and uh, back to the beginning of the variation. Show you the mainline variation once more. So uh, when white has played the attachment in this video, I was talking about this honey underneath. White plays a double honey, black cuts and connects. And this is the turning point where white can choose this move or this move. And this is the simple move for uh, people who want to keep the local fight relatively simple. And it's simple because white is sacrificing those two zones on the right and um, just taking a position um, elsewhere on the board. So that's the relatively uh, simple variation. Or the other one is for white to play down here. Putting more pressure on black's corner, black will slide and white has the opportunity to jump out and start a fight in the center of the board. So that choice of uh, either this move or this move, it really depends on what kind of game you want to play. So that was my main variation for white playing attachment at the start point with black playing a honey underneath. Um, and in a future video, I'll be talking about black's honey on the other side also. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.